Maybe you've noticed that your cellular connection hasn't been working that well recently, or maybe there's been no difference at all to you. Maybe the United States cellular infrastructure is currently under a massive DDoS attack that's been orchestrated by a foreign country, or maybe our cellular infrastructure just wasn't that great to begin with, and it's being further stressed by the fact that so many people are outside streaming their protest on Facebook and LARPing out of boredom. Or maybe there's just too many people right now that are scouring Instagram and Twitter looking for gardening tips in these desperate times. But regardless of the reason for the shoddy service that you may or may not be having, there is a solution for both now and for future service loss. Yami. Now, you're probably wondering, what exactly is Yami? Well, let's take a look at its description right on the Free Software Foundation's website to find out. Yami is a universal and distributed communication platform that has been implemented as Libre Software, which means that it respects your freedoms and your privacy. And this tool is aimed not just at the general public, but also professionals. Yami provides all of its users a universal communication tool that is autonomous, libre, secure, and built on a distributed architecture. So it doesn't require any type of central authority or a central server to function. And GNU Yami also satisfies a high priority software goal of the Free Software Foundation, which is responding to the challenges of privacy on the internet. So it's pretty much a Libre secure messenger without any type of centralized servers. And since it's Libre, this security can actually be verified by security experts who want to go and study the source code. So to download it, go ahead and head on over to yami.net. And I'm here on the Linux downloads page course, Yami works on Linux, and GNU slash Linux is probably the best platform out there that you could use it on. So I'm going to show you guys the installation steps for Mint 19, since that's what I'm currently recording on. But for all these Linux flavors here, you basically just have to copy the commands that are here into your terminal. And the first part here pretty much just adds the sources for Yami. And of course, this part here, the sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get install Yami actually does the installation. So it might be better for you to do these two commands separately because sometimes when you just copy this whole block of code here into your terminal, it can cause some problems. And if there's enough demand from it, I might try to make a video of building Yami from source because obviously we don't have any distros here that we really, really like. I mean, don't get me wrong. I kind of like Mint. I mean, it's my favorite just works distro, but they don't have anything here for Arch or for my favorite distro, which is Gentoo. So enough people are interested. I'll make a video on doing that as well. But now that we have Yami installed on Linux Mint, let's open it up and see what we can do with it. Now, I don't think that I mentioned this yet, but Yami is a peer-to-peer -peer messaging application. So it's completely decentralized. Your text messages, video calls, nudes, etc., they don't get stored on some central server for Glowboys to go subpoena and then do whatever it is that glow boys do with our data, probably use it to shoot our dogs and then burn our houses down. It's all peer to peer, so it works kind of like how torrents work. And Yami supports many different types of communications. Like I said, text messages, voice calls, even file transfers. And it's all done over a connection that has end to end encryption. One of my favorite features about Yami though, is how you go about creating your account. Signal could really learn a thing or two from Yami about account creation, because when you go to make a Yami account, you aren't required to give a phone number or an email address. Hell, you don't even have to publicly register your username. You can have communications on Yami by just directly syncing with other people in person. That's what this, um, QR code right here is. This is basically the unique ID for this Yami account that I created. 
Um, now, obviously, doing something like this would require you to go outside and interact with other human beings, uh, unless you just send this over some other type of communication. But then again, if that communication isn't secure, then you're basically giving out your Yami ID. Um, so yeah, in person might be the best way to do it for a secure comms. Uh, but if your power level is too high for that, then you can just publicly register an available username and then you can secure it with a strong password. And there's still no requirement for a phone number or an email address to do that. So again, signal devs, if you're watching, take some notes. There's no reason to require a person's phone number to sign up for this type of a messaging application. I actually have an example of some direct sync um, contacts right here. So neither Tom or myself have publicly registered usernames. Um, there is someone else probably named Tom, but that's not the same Tom that's here. Uh, we did this contact sync in person, so I can be sure that this is indeed Tom and not someone else. And he's able to send me messages over this communication. Ah, very cool. And you can even send pictures. See, Tom just sent me a selfie. So very good, Tom. Appreciate your help with the video. So let's finish off by poking around in the settings of Yami. Um, I'm sure that somebody is probably going to ask or leave a comment about this. So I'll let you know right now, there isn't a dark mode theme for you to configure inside of the Yami application. But when you're on Linux, Yami just defaults to whatever theme that your system is using. So if you're on Linux, you could effectively get a dark mode by just changing whatever system theme you're using. But if you're on Android and if you're on iOS as well, then you're going to be stuck with this blinding white theme. Uh, so here we can go ahead and sync to other devices or link to other devices rather. That way if a message shows up on your desktop client, you can get it on your mobile client as well. And we can go into the advanced settings. Uh, so here you can um, set up a server for yourself if you want. Um, you can go ahead and change, I think it's down here. Yeah, this is where you can change your connection settings if you want to use something different. You can set what type of video codecs and audio codecs you want to use. If we go into the general settings, so these are gonna be things like notifications and all that type of jazz. Um, you can start the application on login. You can keep Yami active when the window is closed. You could set up your notifications, so this is something that you would definitely want to configure on either your phone or on Linux or I think on Windows too. I think Yami might work on Windows. I don't know. I can't really be bothered to spin up a whole Windows VM just to test one application. Um, so yeah, you can also set up your history here. So if you want to... Um, just keep all text history, then you just leave it as zero. That's the default, or that's the number of days that it'll keep it for rather. So if you just wanna keep it all there forever, then set it to zero. Um, again, this is just going to be stored on your device. And of course, a copy of the chat log that you had with whichever person is gonna be stored on their device as well. So if you delete your text messages from your phone, they actually get deleted. There's no, you know, weird FBI or NSA crap that you can do to recover these text messages from some other type of server, unless they're recovering it from the other person's uh, device. So obviously, as far as your secure comms go, you got to make sure that the people who you are actually communicating to understand how secure comms are supposed to work. So then we have the call recording section. Um, so you can record local video, you can set if you want to actually record your calls or not. And again, it's going to record them locally onto your phone or whichever device that you're using Yami from. It's not going to record it onto something, some other server. Um, and then file transfer. So like I said, you can transfer files. 
Um, you can put in a specific amount that you actually will accept file transfers with. I would assume that there's gonna be some type of hard limit to this though. Like in theory, you can set this to zero and you'll be able to accept any type of transfer, um, but I really doubt that it would let you send probably anything more than a few gigs because pretty much every other messaging application uh, has a limitation in that range. Sometimes they have it in the range of just a few hundred megs. Uh, so yeah, this is Yami. Go ahead and download it, try it out on your systems, and when the grid actually does go down, we'll still be able to keep in touch. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, be sure to share it, like it, subscribe for more content. Peace out.